Joanne Palmazano designs home interiors, but they're not your average rooms. She uses salvaged items, oh, look at these. vintage pieces, look at the detail. all kinds of old stuff, and she transforms them into one-of-a-kind designs. A kitchen island should be a gathering place for the whole family, but this one falls short. It has no counter space for people to sit. It's not even centered under the light in the room, and it's too small. It doesn't have enough storage room. Joanne's idea is to make the small existing island bigger by building it out with salvage materials. I'm going to reface this island with some old wood, some paneling, maybe even some doors cut in half. We'll put a copper top on instead which would match the coppery feel of the tile in the backsplash of this kitchen already. First, Joanne needs to measure how big she wants the island to be because the copper top has to be custom ordered from a sheet metal fabricator. Once she's decided how big the countertop will be, she can base the dimensions of the rest of the project off of that. Joanne's first search is for the old doors that will cover the base. You can find local architectural salvage shops online, and they stock hundreds of doors every day. Because one door won't be enough to fit around the whole island, Joanne will need to find matching doors, which is a little bit harder. After pouring over numerous choices, she hit the jackpot. Three matching doors from a colonial parsonage that was deconstructed. What's more, the beautiful green paint will complement the color scheme in the kitchen. We use these three for the front where the stools are, and these that two for, for the sides. She also needed corbels or brackets to support the overhang of the new countertop. But not all corbels are load-bearing, so she got help from the salvage shop employees picking out a pair that were the right shape and strength. You're gonna want something that's at a right angle. Corbels can be in okay. different degrees. This one's probably more decorative than structural. Okay, this one looks good. And it's the right size I'm looking for, too. I'm gonna take those. To transform three doors and some corbels into a classic kitchen island, first, the doors had to be cut to fit around three sides of the new island, keeping the panel design centered. This can get tricky with old doors. Because they were custom made, they're not all exactly the same size. The hardware was removed and recycled, and the edges planed for a tight fit. Then the doors are attached to the outside of the original island with screws and wood glue. Then, to make the island bigger, a new addition was added using the cut doors and screwing them directly into the floor with trim screws. The back side of the island is left open for three new shelves and a roll-out trash. As a finishing touch, salvaged two-inch wood trim is cut and attached to the rough edges on the open side of the island. Next, the copper sheet has to be prepped for the countertop. It's very thin, so it had to be framed out with two inches of salvage dimensional lumber to keep it rigid. Then, because it hadn't had time to oxidize naturally, Joanne experimented with a liver of sulfur and water solution to give the surface an aged look. She found that applying heat with a blowtorch gave it a unique and colorful patina. Once she found a color she liked, she applied a few coats of shellac on top to seal it and create a smooth and safe surface to prepare food and eat off of. A 12-inch wide sheet of copper is nailed to the underside of the countertop, just where it overhangs the seating area. Then, the countertop is attached to the island face using metal brackets. Now it's time to add the corbels. They're cleaned in shellac to preserve the original look. Finally, they are placed beneath the overhang on either side and secured with discreetly placed wood screws right into the door panels and copper. 
Now, the kitchen island that was once barely functional for food prep is a comfortable family hub, even between meals.